Okay, so we do a real quick, I guess, code review on pointers and references, essentially, which is going to be the as first amp ampersand difference. So I just went over in a different review video. So it's just a little bit of an actual sample code I wrote up, I think about a year or two ago. It's been a while, but I brought it back up because it does a pretty good job at showing how data is moved around and also shows the actual memory addresses and how they're referenced in code. And then you actually get to see the output and those memory addresses and the data that's at the addresses as well. And it also plays into arrays as well. So let's move over to my text editor real quick. It's gonna be VS Code, not a big deal. Um, if you have a different IDE, if you're using Visual Studio, Xcode, etc., etc. As long as you're running uh, these two CVP files, the pass by pointer and pass by reference, um, shouldn't be a big deal. I think it works in pretty much. I think GCC, G++, C Lang, um, MSVC. No matter what compiler you're using, it should run. It's not using anything too out of the ordinary. Just um, I have stream, F stream, string. You can probably get rid of F stream. It's not, but it's there. It is using using namespace SCD. Um, I typically don't like to use the full namespace of SED, but in this case, there's a lot of SCL and indels. Well, actually, I don't think there's any indels here. It looks like all new line characters. But I digress. Um, it's just there for uh, convenience, really. But I digress. Here we initialize our swap function that we'll be using. Both of these are going to be almost in duplicate code. The only difference is one is using a reference, and the other one is using a pointer. You can tell here we have passed by reference, so we are using two references. Okay, so we have our main function. There's no classes here or anything, just some raw code in the CPP file. But let's take a look. So create an array for testing. We have a six element long array of zero through five. So it's all integers. And then we want to reverse this test array. So first we're going to get the actual length, so size of test array divided by the size of an element in there. That's essentially getting our length of the array. It's just a way of doing it by getting the total size in bytes divided by the size of an individual. I'll show kind of how that works a little bit once we run it. But you can see the actual statistics is going to be the size of the array element, which is going to be an integer. Size of the total array, which would be six integers long and then we should derive the actual length of the array of being six elements long. So again, I'll, I'll show the statistics later if that's confusing at all. Let me go through the initial array, which is gonna do a loop through, printing it out. So we print out test array element, so we're doing test array zero, the actual data at that location and then the memory location using ampersand of where that is. And then here we start doing our reverse. Let's make a for loop. So we're going to go um, i0 through half the array, so array length divided by 2. And that's because we're going to do swap 0 through 0 and 5, 1 and 4, and then 2 and 3. So we're going to swap those and reverse in the array. But you're going to create integer x equals i, y equals array length minus one minus i. So it's going to be, say at the very beginning, we get zero, and then here I'm going to get five. So, and when I get one, I'll get four, and when I get two, I'll get three. So I'm passing that in. So since we have x is zero, y is five, I'm going to pass in test array x, which is the element at index zero, and test array y, which is the element at five. So here I'm passing in the actual elements. And finally, we will post the finalized swapped array, which is going to be just some duplicate code from up here. But by the time we get to this printing of the final array, we'll have swapped all the elements. Now, oh, well, there are two indels right here. Oh, and one here. Oh, that's inconsistent, but it's okay. Okay, I digress. So here, we have a swap function, we have int x, int y, int reference xp, and int reference yp. So, 
when you pass the element of array to a function, it is going to pass a reference to it, essentially. And that's why we have this, so it actually is consistent with the data that's being transferred via the function call. So here we will see out the details of x and y, which will be a test array x, which will be zero in this case, um, xp, whatever element is there, and then the location. And then the same thing for y, we will store xp temporarily and a new integer of temp. We will set xp to yp and then set yp to temp. So since we're swapping these elements around, using a temporary variable. And then we'll print out the details after they're swapped. So not too much going on here. Um, this is a traditional uh, transfer of data. We are transferring in an actual reference. So everything that we deal with should update our original data. Not a big deal. Because one thing to note here is this is a void swap. We are not returning any data whatsoever. We are adjusting the array directly in memory by dealing with actual references. So since we're dealing with reference values, we're dealing with adjusting the data located at this memory. And that is how we are going to manipulate this array in our main function from this swap function will actually need to return any data whatsoever. So this is one of the ways that you can use uh, pass by reference and whatnot to say manipulate some variables from your main function or some other function without having to actually transfer data in between the functions. If you actually do reference, you can adjust the memory directly in place from this function and it'd be perfectly fine. Now, conversely, we have pass by pointer. So you look at this actual um, prototype here, swap has int x, int y, just like the other one, but then we also have a pointer of xp and a pointer of yp. So instead of doing references this time, we're doing actual pointers. So a lot of this is going to be the same, we have the same main function, this array is the same, the statistics and getting the bytes and data and all that for the length is all the same and it looks like printing the array is going to be the same. We, everything's going to be identical until this line here. Swap x and y, except for this time, um, one sec. Let me get past my reference. Right over here, and we go to line 54. Okay. So if you look at it, we have line 54, swap x, y, and then just regular test array x and regular test array y. Whereas here, we're passing in the reference directly to our function, okay? And then our printing here is gonna be the same. So when we do that, instead of taking in the references, we are now taking in actual pointers as a dereference. So it's gonna be what that memory address is pointing to essentially. So. With that being said, we now have a difference here of C out test array x, because we still passed in this index here, and then the index we're swapping with, so it'd be zero for x, five for y, then one for x, four for y, two for x, three for y, just as it loops through to do the swap. So that's normal, but then we have a difference here, where we have a dereference, so an asterisk of xp. So we have some memory location being passed in to the function. And here we want to print out what that is pointing to as opposed to printing out the actual data of the variable. So same thing for yp here. And then here we're going to return the location and memory of our pointer as opposed to location and memory of the array index that we passed in. Index address, there we go. And then here is gonna be very similar, but instead of doing like int temp equals xp, we have a pointer, so dereferencing xp, 
and here we're going to be doing a lot of dereferencing here because that's what we passed in. So we need to dereference it to say what it's actually pointing to, adjust those values. We don't want to adjust like the memory locations. We want to adjust what is being pointed to. So that's why we have a bunch of pointers here. So real quick, um, I'm going to pass my pointer over. Oop. Pass my pointer over here. There we go. Let <clears throat> me get to where it starts printing stuff out on both of them. So, array statistics. That looks good. Excuse me. Got a new terminal. And then, uh, oop, my bad. I, real quick, that should be good. First, I will see into pointers. Get that out, and then I will quickly split this. Okay. So here on the left, we have passed by reference. So I'm going to do clang plus plus pass by reference. Um, let's just do ref that out. There it is. It's created. And here I'll do something very similar. Instead of doing reference, we want to do pointer cpp minus o. We point that out. Clear out both of these real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and run ref dot out here. And dot out here. Okay. Oops. There we go. Okay. If none of that made sense, it's perfectly fine. It's just me doing com compilation to terminal. If you run it through, um, VS code or Xcode or however you want to run it should do the same thing. I'm just compiling directly via CLang, which is my compiler of choice, but I digress. Here, we're going to have our array statistics. So if we look at it, we are printing out the size of an array element, which is going to be four bytes. That's how large an integer is here for my particular compiler and hardware. And then we have the size of total array, which is going to be 24 bytes. So that's because I have six elements, which is going to be four bytes. So six times four, we have 24 bytes total. And then same thing on the other side. Our initial array, take a look at it. We have test array zero. So we need value of zero located at 0x7ffe7c811a40. And then since this is an array, this is all contiguous data. So it's all be located one after another. So if you look at it, this number is very similar to all of these. The only difference is that we have 40, 44, 48, 4C, 50, 54. 4C is going to be hexadecimal. This is uh, indicated by the 0x here. That means hex. So all this is in hexadecimal notation. But you can tell that this is just integer after integer after integer, so on and so forth. And then same thing on this side, except for we just have a different memory address, which is completely fine. It's your compiler is going to put it somewhere in memory. That's completely fine, usually. Um, but you have to worry about that. Just know that it is located here in memory for this program. That's perfectly fine. That number will change pretty consistently. Um, but you can tell it's, it's it's fairly similar here. But I digress. Same thing here though, 0004, 08, 0C, 1014, four bytes after each other because it's contiguous data, because that's just how arrays work. Okay, so you start the reverse, and here we have test array zero, value zero located at this memory address. So four zero, and five four, so on and so forth. So here, we're going to have, after our swap, that's right, zero, five located at seven FF E seven eight one one A four zero. Whereas here we now have this number. So you notice that when we do the before and after swap, these are the same, right? 
test array 5 and test array 0 are located at the same time, same, same place, no matter what, on both sides. And you're going to notice that pattern be consistent as we go through. So this before swap, after swap, these are the same pairs here. Next one down here, these are the same pairs. And that's fine. However, even though these are all the same pairs, there's a fundamental difference here. And that is, go over here. When we get to before swap here, we see we have 4054, and then we have A4450, and then we have A4846. So these addresses on the left are changing, but the addresses on the right, B0A8, 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 and they're continuously staying the same. And then if you want to take a closer look at that, I'll take a look at the initial array. A40, A44, A4, A4A, A4C, so on and so forth. That is repeated here. These are the actual references that are directly at the array because we passed in by reference. We passed in references to these actual index locations, right? Whereas over here, we have uh, 600, 604, 608, 600 C, and then we have this B5, B0, B5, A8, B5, B0, all this. But like, this never changed from the initial array to our final array. Those memory addresses are still the same, but then we have these two here that have no correlation to our array memory addresses. So how is that working? Well, before we get there, let's talk about the left side. So here we have some initial array with these memory addresses for each individual index. As we go up here and we look for a swap, we are just passing in the actual index itself. So test array x. And when that gets through, we have an ampersand of XP. So it's passing in a reference to that index. So it's passing in our actual memory address. Or actually, they just the data and it's actually referenced. So that's why when we do at XP down here, it is consistent with that actual data. It's passing that in. So it's the same location in memory. Okay? So whenever we adjust it, we're adjusting the actual data and the array. So that's why all of our memory addresses by pass by reference are the same. When we do pass by pointer, one sec, we are passing in a reference to location that needs to be dereferenced. So we actually have this new pointer. So we create those essentially here. So pointer XP, pointer YP are here. And that's what they're pointing to essentially. They are pointing to each of these individual indexes accordingly. So whenever we have say zero and five, this is pointing at test array zero. This is pointing at test array five. Same thing down here, even though it's the exact same memory location, we've just changed it to point to test array one, and this is now pointing to test array four, and so on and so forth, because we're passing in an actual pointer to these index locations, as opposed to passing in the index location itself. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, and gives some decent explanation on how we actually can do pass by reference with adjusting the actual in location memory and pass by pointer, which does something very similar, but we're actually adjusting pointers that point to that memory itself. But I digress. Hope you learned something. Hopefully this makes a lot more sense. Um, if you had any problem with pointers at all, if you do have any problems, just feel free to ask any questions. Let me know. I'll answer any questions you have. But for now, hope you guys learned something. See you later. Bye.